All right. Super source. Auto, let's go, Graham. We're on a hot spot. Let's hopefully this works this time. Um, so we're doing our UT preview. Uh, this is going to be a good test for the Bulldogs. You've taken off your orange vest, um, and you were uh, – I'm ready for the blackout. Not going to do New that again. The Newland blackout. Ready for the – Ready for the. yep, yep, yep. We got Scott Cochran, who uh, you, and we spoke about off air. I had something to say about wearing black to a big game, didn't he not? Yeah, something something about funerals and, you know, uh, all that good stuff. I don't remember. I wasn't right. there or anything. I didn't, like, cry that night uh, when Georgia was down 31-3 at the half. No recollection of it at all. <laughs> all right, here are the Volunteers' offense. They're, they're pretty good, six and a half yards per play. They're behind Georgia. A little bit, uh, 47% success rate. Um, they've got a they've got a really good rushing attack and a, and a pretty balanced, uh, you know, uh, EPA wise. Um, and they do run the ball a lot. 58% of their plays are runs to 42 pass. Um, and uh, if we go into that, they're they're looking to run on early downs to set up uh, their their offense. Uh, 51 percent of their uh, 51 percent uh, success rate on first down, and 60 percent of their first down plays are rushes, and then that goes up to 61 percent of their plays on second down. And um, their EPA is really good on uh, second down and first and second down rushes. So their third down passing success rate, though, 35 and a half percent, that kind of bucks a little bit of the narrative we've been hearing this week. It sounds like if you get them into a third down passing situation. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They want to they want to set up short third downs. You, they're you know they've pretty got a uh, they're explosive on on run, third down plays, but you know and but fifty eight percent in success rate on uh, third down rushes is a thirty five, like you just said. Yeah, so they they don't want third and longs for sure. Um, and I think that it, this you know a lot of games are one on first and second down, but certainly this one's going to be. Um, hey, are we live? Pretty, I think so. It says on air. Nothing went out. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't. Uh, let me see. You want to keep going and record? I got to go, though. This is. Yeah, just record it. Um, Put it back out. Yeah. Um, going through their. Uh, SEC stat cat zone uh, concepts. They do a lot of inside runs. Um, inside zone read is far and away their most popular SEC stat cat uh, concept. 119 plays, 58% uh, success rate. And then also they'll, they'll go power inside and those plays are 58 uh, snaps, 8.1 yards per play, but a little lower success rate on those. So an explosive PA of, of uh, 0.201 on that. Uh, Graham, that was a lot of metrics. Um, talk to me. Here's their – break me up. Yeah. Then... I, well, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me in this game, um, you know, there's – like, just looking at the success rates and all that, it feels like Tennessee is really dependent on the, the big play, right? Like, it's all about the explosive play. Uh, no one really – has been able to just drive the field on this Georgia defense all year. But uh, I particularly don't think Tennessee is suited to do that, even more so than some of the teams that Georgia's faced in recent weeks. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, yeah, did you hear me? Yeah, 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 you're there. Go. Uh, I just switched to our, our faces instead of the stats. So maybe that's – Oh, gotcha. Good. No, no worries. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the – that's the crux of this game, though, is, like, if Georgia can avoid the big play, I think that they're going to be in good shape. And I think, you know, we can get into some clips here in a second, but, like, there's a few things that Tennessee tries to do to create big plays that I think are preventable from Georgia's side. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you want to get into some plays here? Yeah, let's do it. So, yeah, you're going to see – I mean – Tennessee is a true spread offense. They're going to make you defend all 53 yards of the field horizontally. Um, they are very good, but like there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles like that right there that you've got to win. And it, you know, there's a lot of space that happens. And if you don't tackle in space, 
you can all of a sudden be looking at somebody's taillights. There, Kentucky has two guys that take bad angles. One of them misses a tackle, and boom, 75-yard touchdown, first play of the game. So going to the next one, um, they don't always block these well. Like right here, you see Tennessee's receiver with that block, and that guy busts into the backfield. And Georgia's been really good at doing that. Um, there is another one where not blocked well. Like, I think there's a chance that Georgia is going to pick up tendencies on film and could actually pick one of these on Saturday. But the problem is that if you play too tight versus the screens, this can happen and they're going to, you know, get, get over your head here. And if they get behind you, that's a problem as well. So they force you to play a lot of man coverage just by the amount of space that they play horizontally on the field. This is a beautiful tendency breaker right here. This looks like a it's going to be the type of formation they would run a screen out of. Instead, they run a, a fake a fake little bubble screen on the outside with a Seattle concept mixed in, and they hit the wheel route down the sideline. So that's the, you know, that's the challenge, right? It's like if you try to jump one of these too hard, you could get caught, and they might, you know, you might bite on something like that, and all of a sudden you're in trouble. Um, all right, you want to go into the – I got 39 queued up. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so, I mean, they have the most success on the ground when they're running off right tackle. You remember our old friend Cade Mays? Um, they're racking up 7.9 yards in attempt running behind him. He will bust an assignment, though, like you saw right there. They don't have a great offensive line. Uh, a lot of pressures are allowed off the left side. Starts with the left tackle, Darnell Wright. He's just not that good. Um, that's a battle that Georgia needs to win. That's a battle that Nolan Smith should win. Um, that being said, you can get pressure, pressure on them. And if you lose contain, Hinden Hooker can do some really nice things, scrambling with the ball, getting upfield. He is one of those quarterbacks that is willing to take on some contact. So he's not afraid to try to go straight up the field, which is usually how big quarterback runs happen. And then there, man, like, if you don't set edges in this game or you get too upfield and get out of position, that's, you know, that's where they'll burn you. It is worth mentioning that like that play right there, if this was Georgia's defense, that's the spot that Adam Anderson used to be in. Georgia's got to stay disciplined on the edges, Robert Beal and some of these young guys, whoever it is that's filling in off that edge, they've got to set that edge and they can't bite too hard on anything. Cause if they do, Tennessee can make them pay for it. Yeah, I was looking at some of the stats. Um, they've got a really good TD to, to uh, interception ratio. They're, they only had thrown two picks all year and 22 touchdowns was actually much better than Georgia's ratio. Uh, but they've given up 33, 33 snaps, uh, sacks. So, um, you know, they're, they're you know, I don't know what to say about that. I, I don't know if some of these long developing plays, because they've had a they've got a high success rate and explosive rating on the those shot plays, but those take a long time to develop, which is kind of what we talked about with the Florida game. You know, that if they're going to take deep shots, they got those take time to develop. And I, I, you know, even without Adam Anderson, we've got plenty of guys up front that can that can uh, that can get to the quarterback. You can see uh, Spragans right there is allowing 18 pressures. Uh, and then, and he's getting a lot of snaps. So there, he's a starter and he's going to be in that and getting a lot of snaps and, and we should be able to attack some of those plays. It'll be interesting to see if they change any, change any of that up and, and keep it underneath to try to beat that pressure. Yeah, it will. Um, I, I'm definitely interested to see like, you know, Spragans and, uh, the left tackle, right. I think both those guys, Georgia can pick on, um, you know, Spragans is, the right guard there. So that should set up well. And I mean, also Cooper Mays uh, has been playing center lately. You see there, he's got the lowest grade of any of these guys. He hasn't given up a ton of pressures or a ton of sacks, but a lot of teams don't create much pressure or havoc plays from their D tackle position. Georgia is not one of those teams. So I think that that's a battle that Davis, Wyatt, Carter, all those guys should be able to really move him around consistently. And it's going to be tough on Hinden Hooker if Cooper Mays is getting put in his lap 
over and over and over. Like, I, I don't know that Tennessee has time for these long developing double moves down the field against this Georgia front. Yeah, I, I had this graphic up there a second ago. You can see that way down there, at the, uh, the, was that uh, shot variations and, and, you know, they, they run a lot of concepts, but I was, I don't know if I've got the um, UT pass. Uh, yeah. Uh, Velas Jones is the only guy that seems to be running a full route tree. And did you yeah. notice this going through the tape? I mean, you can see that Tillman, Peyton and Warren are all basically just the, they have their plays and then Velas is the guy that, that can run the, the full uh, playbook, if you will. No, for sure. He's the best receiver by far. He's the most versatile. Um, I think if Georgia is going to give up a big play over the top, he's going to be the one that it's done to because I think he does enough with his route tree that, that it's actually conceivable to see Georgia biting on a double move from him at some point. Um, but Yeah, yeah. It's- Peyton's a guy they go to over the top, and Velas is running those screens and the slants and and uh, and a lot of the curls and stuff. And Peyton's a guy they're looking to get over the top with. So, um, you know, Ringo and and uh, Kendrick are, you know, going to be trying to lock him up. Yeah, totally. All right, you want to get to the offense? Yep. Um, you know, Georgia's. I, I've noted all in you know, the last few weeks since my little Debbie Downer moment going into the Auburn game that um, they have. I wanted them to get better, and, and the offense has gotten progressively better every week. We're up to seven. Years. This is an SEC league play, so this is you know taking out the Alabama and, and the Clemson games, Alabama Birmingham game. Uh, seven yards per play, fifty two point six percent success rate, and an EPA of three point four uh, three point four five, which is outstanding. Um, you can see even that rush rate is is getting really good at fi- over 52 percent success rate the passing is explosive at you know f- you know that's those are lsu and alabama numbers from the last couple of on that passing offense wow. so uh and that's in league play so um let's see here um let's go to some plays i think i got the offense queued up oh this is what you want to talk about with uh, this kentucky's offense uh, versus tennessee yeah so We talked about how you got to tackle against Tennessee's offense. Uh, The flip side is that Tennessee is a poor tackling defense. And that safety right there, number 22, Jalen McCullough, uh, he's going to have a free run at Rodriguez in the hole. He comes with poor form. He misses the tackle. That is a pattern on tape. He has a missed tackle percentage of 30.4%. That's not good. That's somebody Georgia needs to pick on. Um, Georgia's offensive line needs to set – enough of you know set set themselves enough at the line of scrimmage to let these backs get to the second level some because if they can they're going to tear it up um yeah here's mccullough and this is his coverage grade but his you know the defense grade is 51.2 which is basically the same you can see on these are retargets but 27 missed tackles on seven um and yeah he's he's got 28 catches on 39 targets is a really high catch rate given up yeah, for sure. Uh, so I do think there's some, some holes in the secondary that, uh, that uh, you know, I think Stetson's going to be the one under center that's going to be able to exploit this. Yeah, and so Tennessee tried to do what most teams have tried to do to Georgia lately when they play Kentucky, and that's just load the box, shut down the run. They brought six or more guys frequently, especially early in the game. Um, later on, you know, they were able to, to loosen that up with the pass, but – just because they fit the run right does not mean it's a stuff right there. That last play you saw uh, Aaron Beasley, Tennessee linebacker, just whiff on Cavassier smoke. So another guy to watch out for, he's got a missed tackle percentage of 21%. So there, like you're saying, there's a lot of holes here that Georgia can exploit. You can bully Tennessee with a physical run game. If you give your backs enough room to get downhill, like, we were kind of talking about a second ago, like if you can just win enough at the line of scrimmage, uh, not even talking about getting to the second level, but just win enough at the line of scrimmage to stalemate there, then let your back get into the back seven of that defense. They're going to feast and do a good job. Um, yeah, here's the concept, you know, the, on that inside zone read, which Georgia runs a lot, uh, Tennessee's allowing five yards of carry and a 46% success rate. Um, and, you know, that's, that's where we're going to attack them. And, and, you know, if our O-line can, can sort itself out and get some holes, I think we can, 
run the ball on him. That's important to do in the, on the road yeah. in SEC for sure. Well, in Monken's most run play by a decent margin is that inside power. You know, you see that on the bottom there. You know, Georgia's running that for seven and a half yards of play, and Tennessee's giving up 5.4 yards of play on it. So that bodes very well for what Georgia likes to do in the run game. Yeah. Um, oh, that's the wrong graphic there. Nope. Don't do that. Let's do this. And uh, let's do some plays. I, I've got Q30 on your play sheet here. You, uh, I got 19. 19? Watch this. 19. Perfect. Yeah, so Kentucky's offensive line is the best one in the SEC. Georgia hasn't looked great against loaded boxes lately, but Kentucky was able to bust runs against seven-man fronts versus Tennessee. That's one right there. So it's just these guys don't fill gaps very well. That's the point that I'm trying to illustrate here. And ultimately, they don't flow super well to the ball. Um, there is another just gash run play. Uh, then, you know, in passing situations or when Tennessee wants to, they will play very soft zone coverages. And the MO seems to be more about not giving up explosive plays than not giving up yardage. So they'll just drop out and they will leave a lot of big spaces in the middle and a lot of spaces on the boundaries. Um, and they play that soft defense because they're not great in coverage. But these heavy cushion zones will give quarterbacks easy, quick reads if they want to run that quick game. Like you see Georgia run that pattern right there. Uh, Stetson threw it to Darnell Washington on that third and nine last week. JT threw it to John Fitzpatrick later in the game. Like that spot in the defense, they will hit a lot. So when Tennessee comes out, I think Georgia's got zone busters and I think Georgia's O-line – Provided they hold up in pass protection, there should be lots of big spaces to throw into. But I don't know if Tennessee is going to play a ton of man coverage and, you know, really just leave all these receivers in man. I'm not sure if that's how they're going to really do this. They've been more bend but don't break. Yeah, and here's the is SEC stat cat concepts that flood that um, we had up there. That's one of the the plays we've run a lot of. You know, flood one side of the field and and let Stetson find his guy. Um, you know, they're defending it okay, but still 48 percent success rate on those plays. And Georgia, you know, is averaging almost eight yards of play on those. And also, look at that shot down there at the bottom. It's a low success rate because that's a big you know you know go route or you know all all verts or whatever you want to call that, but. Um, they're des- definitely susceptible there, and Georgia's been el- just elite with that <laughs> with those shot yeah. variation plays down there. Fifty six percent success rate, eighteen and a half yards a, 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 a an attempt, and a, a, a super explosive rating of 0. 0.820. Super explosive, I like that. Super explosive, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what play you got next? I got seventy eight. Uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Our way. That's Short. the one we just looked at. But yeah, moving into forty nine. Yeah. So they will, if you do get them in man coverage, they'll give up stuff over the top. Like they're the slot guy gets a man to man matchup. And I think that's Robinson for Kentucky, but it's pretty easy pickings. Just a, a nice little sort of, you know, he cuts that outside towards the sideline off the, of the seam. So I think that Georgia can do that stuff with Kiers Jackson in this game. If they get that look, I just don't know if he'll get that look a ton. Um, but the middle of the field comes open on this defense a lot on obvious passing downs. And I think we're going to see a Stetson quarterback draw for a big gain on Sunday if Tennessee decides to play that over and over there. You saw Levis hit it. Uh, and then also, dude, the matchup to watch in this game, linebacker Aaron Beasley for Tennessee. If Georgia can get a running back or a tight end matched up on him, big play waiting to happen. Here uh, they get Rodriguez on him again. and. Levis just airmails the throw, but you're going to see he lets him run right past him, and he's wide open in the middle of the field. And it probably should have been a pick, but if Levis throws that ball sooner and better, it's a big gain. Uh, and so, yeah, they, you know, Kentucky went after him a lot. Uh, the first two defensive backs for Tennessee are Alante Taylor and Warren Burrell. Taylor is pretty solid in, at corner. Burrell gets lost a lot in zone. That was him right there. He can be beaten in man. Taylor is a, a pretty good corner, though. I think he could, you know, legitimately lock Georgia's guys down on the boundary from time to time. Um, but I think everywhere else in the secondary is wide open. Um, McCullough, you have there, we already talked about. You see Taylor with a high grade, but Burrell is sort of that 
that DB two role. Um, but both of the safeties, uh, they've got um, Taylor, or I'm sorry, McCullough on one side and Flowers on the other. Neither of them are very good in coverage. And our old friend uh, Brandon Turnage, look at that. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, there he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Dude, uh, we just did an up tempo show. I think up tempo, dude. We're getting yeah. ready for Saturday, man. We had to we had to set our body clocks right. Um, yeah. <laughs> one thing so, I want to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say you just so highlight some of those last plays. Uh, you know, I, you're. I'm expecting Bowers and to have a big game, maybe. I think Georgia will definitely try to work the tight ends, both Bowers and Washington. Um, and I expect Georgia to do some stuff in the passing game with the running backs. I mean, I, this game is screaming for that. Uh, Tennessee is just kind of the way that their defense is set up. It's very susceptible to backs that are good catching the ball of the backfield. So I look for Cook and McIntosh to continue getting some targets in the passing game. Um, this game in general, uh, just I know this is going to sound strange, but the way that Tennessee plays run defense – uh, it feels like the type of game where we could see Cook have a big day and bust along, you know, a long explosive run. Um, not saying that Zamir couldn't, but something about it, just the way they flow feels more like a Cook game to me. Um, yeah, and I mean, the other thing I wanted to say is that I, I think that Georgia, like we've talked, people have talked a lot about Hendon Hooker this week, and he is very, very good. I think he's a top 10 college quarterback right now um just with how he's playing but i don't feel like georgia has a huge quarterback disadvantage in this matchup after seeing what stetson did last week off just straight drop backs like especially against this tennessee defense if the run game is not working i think that stetson can can just drop back and georgia can have a lot of success through the air um and you know looking at kind of some of their metrics i mean the talk about Tennessee has been big plays, big plays, deep balls, deep balls, but hooker on 20 plus yards downfield attempts is 46.7% completion. He is eight touchdown or he is a, uh, yeah, eight touchdowns, one interception, 20.1 yards per attempt, but Stetson is 57.1% completion, 23.7 yards per attempt, six touchdowns, two picks on those same types of throws. So Georgia is explosive in the passing game as well. If, Something went really, really wrong on defense. Uh, Georgia's well equipped to to trade blows in a shootout. Um, what's your prediction? All right, so bear with me for a second here. Okay, I got a little thing written out. So Georgia can get pressure off of that left tackle right and the right guard Spragans. Um, I think that. That group has been penalized a lot this year, that Tennessee offensive line. So I think that some of that pre-snap motion that Georgia does will catch them a couple times on Saturday. Um, I expect them to get consistent pressure in the passing game. I do have concerns about that matchup where Adam Anderson is supposed to be. And, you know, Cade Mays is their best offensive lineman. Georgia's got to figure something out there. I see – Georgia maybe losing contain on Hooker or not setting that edge in the run game at a couple critical junctures and Tennessee being able to get a chunk run off a cutback or Hooker scrambling right, finding something downfield. So I think Tennessee is going to make some plays, but um, they've relied on coverage bus on the outside to produce points, man. That's what like against Alabama, 24 points off three coverage bus on the outside. And I think that Georgia has been good on the boundaries. Um, I think that they may give up a play, but I don't think they're going to give up a bunch of plays. So, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I think that tempo could have ultimately kind of work against Tennessee in this game, just in terms of game state. And I don't know what they're going to do on defense like we were talking about. I'm fascinated to see if they come out and try to stop the run first or, or play it soft. But they're poor tackling. Like we said, Cook, I think big day for Cook. Um get running backs, tight ends matched up on Beasley. And you think that ultimately this is going to be a bounce back day on the ground for Georgia's offensive line. I think that they'll come out a little bit pissed after last week. Um, I, I like Georgia to start quick for the first time in a month. I do think Tennessee will deliver some punches, but it won't be enough. Georgia 45, Tennessee 17. 
bonus, bonus. Keep an eye out for a block field goal on Saturday from Georgia. Nice. Um, I'm not as confident. I think we're still going to struggle coming out of the gates uh, in, the, in a, what I expect to be a loud Neyland Stadium. Um, I, I'm looking for, you know, to come alive in the second half. I wouldn't be surprised if we see us down, uh, if it's a little back and forth in that first half. So, um, uh, but I'm, I'm going to go Georgia uh, 38, Tennessee 20. Uh, okay. sadly. So it's going to be close to a cover, but I don't think they're going to get there. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's fascinating, man. Just this tempo. There's a reason why everybody doesn't do it. And it's because shit can get out of hand really quick. Uh, you know, you can go three and out very quickly and only take 20 seconds off the clock. And that defense played a hundred plays last week, man. I just think that you might be right in the first half, you know, uh, but I think that that defense is going to wear quickly. And I think that running game late in the game is going to be pretty punishing and Georgia is just going to sit on them like they do everybody, but Tennessee's not doing anything special on offense, man. There were, there was a lot made of how many plays they play, but they've, they had, they were, every game was over 90 snaps when I was scraping the data. <laughs> it was kind yeah, of I mean, they're probably used to it by this point. You're right. Yeah. Uh, I mean like, you know, the Alabama was 90 close to over 90 to uh, the Mississippi game was over 90. It was like, so yeah, they're, and maybe and maybe Georgia wears them down, or maybe get them out of sorts and and get some three and outs as Georgia is, is wanting to do, and and uh, and you know even lean on them a little more. So uh, I think the tempo plays on that defense side too. So Georgia's can can shut them down and and keep uh, upset their defensive flow as well. So um, yeah. I, I hope they get to a, a, a fast start because you know that, you know Neyland's going to be rowdy. Um, do you have any other picks for the weekend? Any spreads I'd, you like? I don't have any, Graham. I've been uh, – I know you've been busy. I've been busy, yeah. I know that my pick sheet went four and three with three and three in Maction and had uh, and had pit, pit, pit last night. So I had minus, pit minus six and a half, yeah. It was a little close, a little dicey. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I don't have a graphic made yet, but I'll just throw these out there. Uh, I got Boise State minus 13 and a half tonight. They're getting back some O-linemen against Wyoming. Classic mountain time zone uh, game for Dog Out West. South Florida plus 23 against Cincinnati as well. I think the Bearcats are fake, bro. I think the pressure's getting to them. I think they're going to be tight, and that's going to keep them from putting this game away. Penn State plus one versus Michigan. I think they went out right. Uh, OU minus five against Baylor. I don't think Baylor's that good. I know Oklahoma has struggled, but, um, yeah, I still think that they're much better than Baylor. New Mexico State plus 51 and a half at Alabama. Uh, the Aggies have had – a few a few games where they've scored some scored into the 30s this year and uh i just don't think alabama's defense is good enough to pitch a shutout right now at least not the second and third stringers so yeah uh purdue plus 21 versus uh ohio state again ohio state continues to play with their food i like georgia to cover 20 and miami minus three versus florida state i also like the over in that game so I, I'm I'm on the other side of the Ohio State game. I think a lot of people are taking Purdue in the points. I think that Ohio State is the second best team in the in the country, uh, mm. and I expect them to come back after a, a you know kind of a crummy win the other day, and you know, announce as as uh, Nuke Lelouch would say, announce their presence with authority. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, they're it's hard to pick against them from a. Uh, from like a statistical standpoint, because their net YPP and all that stuff is very, very good. It's just they, I don't know, man. They, they put up some clunkers, man. Damage. It's some bad teams. Yeah, totally. It'll be interesting. All right, Graham. This says we're live, so it went somewhere, um, and I okay. don't know where. But we're recording, huh. and it'll be on YouTube. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, we kind of had to fit this one in, in our crazy schedules, but we always appreciate all the feedback and the sharing and the comments we get on YouTube. Please, uh, pl pre please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, with that, enjoy the game. Go dogs. Go dogs.